Hey everybody, what's up? Techie 101 here. Welcome back to another episode of Zombie Powder Review Talk Show. This will be chapter number 21. Um, I'm sorry, this is like an off-the-cuff, just out-of-surprise video, because w there's been an issue with my desktop like the past five days where um, there was internet, and I, I, I can use Skype and everything, and there's Wi-Fi, and I can get on my laptop over here. The problem was, and this is like the weirdest problem I've ever had with my computer, is that none of my browsers would load. Like, none of them. Like, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Chrome, nothing loaded. Internet's connected, everything's fine. I'm, like, digging around the wires to making sure everything's, you know, connected. I'm messing around with the Internet settings here. Everything's all good to go. And, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't work for, like, five days. I must have tried, like, everything in the book. And even the thing that solved it, which I just figured out, like, less than an hour ago, was not something that... It, it was something that I've tried before. It didn't work the first time. I tried it again the second time, and it worked. So I don't freaking... I have no idea how it is. So it, just in this sheer state of joy that I've been in for, like, oh, my God, I can't believe I fixed it. I'm such a freaking computer genius. We're doing this. We're doing a chapter review of Zombie Powder. Hold on. Let me, let me bring over the camera a little bit more here so I can show show off the uh, the panels. All right, so here we go. This will be chapter number 21. Let's start off with the B-side, Naked Monkeys number 14. So this time we have uh, an interesting character. Did not really expect this person or thing to even have a B-side, Naked Monkeys, because I wasn't even sure it was like a sentient creature. Uh, it's a Montine. It's, it's, it's Mystic's weird familiar that he created by blowing up his left arm, like, uh, you know, uh, you know, Holly Bell Fraxion style, you know, and it created this massive state puff marshmallow man thing. Actually, I shouldn't be calling it a man because it turns out Amantine is in fact a woman or a girl, I guess. She's only three years old. Uh, but yeah, it was born on January 3rd. I'm not even sure how that's even how that even applies. Uh, the result of the supreme sorcery which was made by Balmonk's own right arm. What logic does an arm make as such a thing? There has been a, such a, such questions, but there is no theory. It's because it's what Balmonk does. Uh, it's, by the way, I think you've realized it by now, but it's, it's a female, this thing. It has, like, a little bow that Kubo put there. So, basically, Kubo just completely stepped around the issue. Like, how does Balmung create this thing? Nah, it's, he's a sorcerer. He could just do anything. It's, it's beyond the realms of science and man, you know? Whatever, I'll go with it. And the second person we have on the B-side, Naked Monkeys, is a character we've yet to meet, Shaka Boo. And actually, no, I think we've seen her in, like, the background when in back in Chapter 14 when we got to see all of Balmonk's circus gathering together before uh, Mystic completely nuked it with that ring dragon lightning cannon shit. Uh, but yeah, Shaka Boon is, um, is a woman, despite the, uh, the kind of gruff biker appearance there. Uh, she's 23 years old. She is a white-skinned old lady who carries a tremendously... Okay, old lady, but she's 23... Um, I'm not sure what that indicates, but then there's some kanji after 23, so maybe it's like 23 allegedly, or calls herself 23, but she's really like 65. Maybe she's a younger woman. People desperately question her self-claim of age 23. Okay, here we go. She's number four in the Balmonk Circus. She has a crush on Balmonk. All right, so she's number four, so the fact that Kubo went out of the way to actually rank her, like the last person we saw in The Last Naked Monkeys who was like the acrobatic, I forget her name. She's like little girl. Uh, she, she didn't get a number in the circus. Shakaboon got a number, the same with Mystic and fouls on and uh, and um, and pounder i mean so therefore i'm assuming she might show up again because you she usually you don't get a rank unless you usually show up but anyway let's begin with the chapter we have track number 21 no hesitate no fear so chapter starts off with Mystic basically ripping off Balmonk's arm from the last chapter. You know, Mystic came to his senses after accessing his inner hall or was like his inner beast or whatever. And, you know, he comes back to his senses and Balmonk combines all of his hands together in like this weird Dr. Seuss type fashion to create this massive cannon. He's just like, Balmonk cannon! He's like right up off to fire this thing out. And heaven knows what it would actually fire, you know, like an actual mortar, you know, or it could, it could fire an entire Roman legion just depending on like how Mystic's power works, you know, whatever. So he's right about to fire the thing off, and Gamma just, like, shing, just appears right in front of him and just grabs his shoulder and just like, hey, is this shoulder real? Just rips it off. Well, it turns out it was real because the entire cannon begins to disintegrate after his, uh, after Balmonk's arm is being torn off, after which uh, Gamma proceeds to just continually nuke the shit out of Amontine. Like, he used his, uh, that water dragon cannon thing to, like, cut it vertically, but in this one it just seems like he just, like, sliced that thing down, like a pillar of, like, energy just blew him up. Uh, so this thing is probably 
probably down for the count. I can't see this thing getting back up. Uh, we get the title page there, which features like the whole main cast. So we have a Montine crash to the ground, and you see it's like it's breaking up, like its teeth and everything are disintegrating. And uh, Gamma just holds out Mystic's arm triumphantly, and he's like, "Haha! This thing was real, Balmonk. Got your number now." And then we see like a kick-ass, pathetic page of Balmonk, who I don't know if it's like his magic starting to wear off because even all the shit he can do, he probably can't do it infinitely. He can't just like spawn. Like, don't, don't even get me into a Gremmy discussion with Bleach here, but I'm pretty sure, like, he couldn't just spawn, like, 30 Amontines whenever he wanted, or, you know, like, there has to be a limit to, like, pulling tigers out of your hat and summoning explosions out of nowhere. Like, he has to have a limit. So, here we have Balmonk completely broken down. Both of his arms are ripped right the fuck off, and he's just standing there with this expression on his face, like, yeah, I, I think I might be bested at this point, because you gotta figure he used one of his arms to manifest a Montine, and I guess the other arm he used... Uh, which was not any of the arms that he used to create the cannon. That arm was actually used to be the cannon's trigger. So I guess he, like, bent his left arm back and then, like, manifested the other arms to create the cannon and then his arm was the trigger and then Gamma ripped that shit off. So now he's got nothing. He's got no arms left, uh, you know, so... He's like, okay, Amontine, come back. Then we get, like, a weird scene where Amontine begins to, like, fade out of existence. Like, she begins to, like, disintegrate back into, like, Balmonk. I assume, like, she was going to disintegrate back into, like, Balmonk's, like, right, like, he would have, like, one of his hands back so he can fight. Uh, but no, it turns into, like, it looks like two hands that then just fall on the ground in front of, uh, Mystic. And then Mystic uses them to create the wings that he used to fly earlier. So, I don't know. I mean, I guess if he really wanted to, Mystic could just, like, pop those things back on and they could just be, like, hands. But maybe he realizes like he's really weakened now and then Gamma managed to take out his strongest like supreme sorcery Amontine so there's no point in fighting him anymore uh, so he's just like I'll retreat this time uh, you know it, it's just, just for the sole fact that I will not be able to fully enjoy myself when we kill each other, you know, because obviously if at the point is right now, like both Gamma and Mystic have been worn out, you know, their fight has been extremely tiring and, and, you know, exhausting on both of them. So I think like Mystic figures, he could continue this fight and he might be able to kill Gamma, but Gamma is going to end up killing him too. That's It's going to be like a really close call. So he figures, you know what, this time I'm just going to call it a day and I will be satisfied just knowing that the he inside your head is not dead. Like the other Gamma is still alive and he's just he's just happy that one day he might be able to fight against that Gamma again. So he's about to all, like, cheese it the hell out of there. Gamma's like, oh, fuck, no, you're not getting the hell out of here. Don't be naive. Don't think you could just run away from me so easily. And just as he's saying that, the arm that... I thought Gamma was, like, squeezing it in, like, rage there, which he might have been, I'm not sure, because he had it in his right hand. And he's just, like, squeezing it, just like, don't you try to get away from me, you freaking piss ant. Just boom! Just explodes right in his fucking face. And, uh, you know, so, so he goes down, I guess, or not, it doesn't go down, he's freaking and gamma but he just like this is like a little staggered a little bit like oh damn that was like that was like a c4 explosion in my face I got, like, a bloody nose because of that, you know, so uh, he uses, of course, though, Mystic does have the opportunity here to kind of escape, so he's like, it was a pleasure, Akotabe Gamma, let's enjoy it the next time we meet, so he flies off into parts unknown, and uh, Gamma's just sitting there just like, damn, he knows how to run away pretty good, right, so Gamma's just a little bit more, you know, I guess he figured he wanted to end Mystic right there, just because Mystic was the one that brought out this other version of him, which he clearly has a distaste for, he really doesn't like the idea that there's this other version of him, he wants that person to be gone, he even went so far to say that guy is dead and more than anything more than anything mystic has done to him it's just that he put this thorn in his side just like this little prick that's just like damn it he's still there even after all this time he's still freaking in me that's Oh, I just, that is so annoyed that Mystic was able to bring him out. So, I think he just wanted to hurry up and kill him, but clearly that's not the case. So, any, he, so you know, more than just he wants to kill Mystic, he's more just kind of annoyed at himself, really, you know? So, uh, anyway, we cut to, a, like, a different, like, first-person perspective where we see an unknown individual staring at Gamma from we really don't know where at, uh, and the voices are just kind of saying, like, we don't know who it is, and the voices are just going on, like, hey, the captain just got beat. Should he run? And, like, there's, like, a bunch of, like, these voices going along with the same time like there's a bunch of people discussing what to do now that Balmonk has fled and we he's, we see Gamma in this first person perspective who's like slowly turning around like he's hearing the voices and starts walking toward them and he's just like oh shit they heard us he heard us like no they didn't just be, be be quiet stop breathing and Gamma just he takes his right arm and just like slams it into the freaking train car that was left behind after he cut it in half and he yanks out a freaking guy like this weird looking I, I don't even know he's like kind of bald but he has like a like a like a mark on him like a kanji this big muscular beefy dude he just pulls him out of the freaking magic train and 
he's just like, oh, well, okay, I figured there must be some kind of engine, there must be some kind of uh, device to run this magic train, so I figured there was something like this. So apparently, is it, this kind of undermines the concept of a magic train, but apparently what it was, was that each car of the magic train has like a, like a guy underneath it, like a, like a bodybuilder Sandow type dude, who's in like the, this cockpit compartment, like running it like a freaking, like, like 10 speed bicycle. And he's just running these trains like all together. And all the cars have one of these. So Gamma's just like, there's more of you, aren't there? And he's like squeezing the guy's head with his right arm. He's about ready to crush this dude's skull. And he's just like, yes, yes, there's more, there's more. Everybody get out. Come on, come on, come on, get out. So all the other guys just pop out, and he's just like, uh, nice to meet you. I'm Kunki, I'm Marky, and I'm Do Dora Baki. And they're like, they're like these guys that are each running each of the cars. And Gamma's just like, just get off the freaking thing. I'm just going to destroy the train, right? So, um... He's just like, they all apparently get off, and Gamma's just like, okay, um, I need to catch up with that other train, because remember, Golfina's still on it. Like, even though Mystic has been, like, defeated and he's fled, which I don't know where he's going, he might actually go back to the original train, though I don't think so. I think he realized, like, that's where Gamma's gonna go next, so I'm just gonna get the hell out of here while I can. But Wolfina's still on this train with her brother, and she's kind of critically injured. You know, Balmonk did a number on her, she's all beaten and broken, and this train's going, like, like an excess of, like, 100 miles an hour through the freaking desert wherever that's going to happen so gamma needs to catch up to that so he's just like you guys you know you get back in your cockpits or whatever we need to catch that train and uh and the guys are just like well what are, what are you talking about we can't we can't do that that train was like separated like you know a couple minutes ago that that thing's probably you know so many miles away from here there's no way we can catch up with that and gamma's just like he gives them the death stare and just like you got a problem with that and the guys are like no 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 no, no. we'll chase it right away please kind kind sir do not do not hurt us please like you can tell these guys are just wimps and they just saw the leader of their circus, their boss, get the crap kicked out of him by this dude. And they probably saw Gamma go all crazy in her hollow. So they're not having any of this, right? So, uh, you know, they, they all, I guess, apparently go, they, they go back in their cockpits and they start heading on to where Wolfina is. And then we cut back to Wolfina for like the latter half of the chapter where we see her trying to uh, pry uh, um, Emilio's uh, body off this thing. Because remember, Mystic had him like strapped into this train, like in like part of his body was like melded into this, this metal framework or whatever of the train so she's trying to use her tripod to cut this thing out and uh, she's like it's not working it's like it won't break at all like what the hell is this train even constructed with so then she starts hearing a voice in her like over like uh, like somewhere other location on the train and she's just like ha 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 it's no use ugly woman this magic train is made so only circus members can use it so all of a sudden this freaking huge boulder type deal just jumps out of the freaking train lands on the platform that she's standing on and uh, this is Shakaboon this is the person we saw in the naked monkey so yeah there we go I knew she was going to be in this chapter but I had to act like I didn't so she's like a freaking behemoth like big Bertha type chick okay so he just like slams on like a sumo wrestling shakes the whole damn train so Wolfina actually gets knocked off of her feet because you know Wolfina you know she the cheek I can't imagine being more than like 120 130 pounds she probably doesn't weigh much more than I do well you know you have to add in her you know her chesticles there but you know still doesn't really weigh very much this chick is like a boulder you know makes the mountain from game of thrones look like freaking uh, Tyrion. so <laughs> so she she's staring down freaking wolfina and wolfina's looking up at her and she's like oh shit <laughs> she's like my name is shakaboon i'm a sexy lady who was told to watch over this train by lord balmonk so apparently this was the other member that balmonk was talking about how you know back when uh you know gamma cut up the train so balmonk and gamma could have their battle uh he's just like oh you don't think there's other members on the train ha 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 you know totally the mustache you're like i planned for this contingency so uh you know wolfina is a little bit shocked at first but she doesn't really back down you know shaka moon starts charging to her just like you i'm gonna run you down i'm gonna like toss you off the train or whatever and uh well actually no she just she just wants to kill her um so Wolfina just like she just doesn't hesitate though. She pulls out her freaking tripod and she launches the freaking projectile thing that she used against uh, Sacramento's gang uh, that knocked him out. And remember that knocked out Sacramento in one blow. And uh, actually, I think it knocked out a bunch of guys in one blow. This one nails Shakaboon like straight on in the face, like this gas propelled, you know, uh, you know, the end of the tripod nails her right in the face. And Wolfina's like, for a second there, she's just like, I did it because she knocked Shakaboon backwards on her back. But like at the last minute, like she regains her composure and she gets back up on her feet and we find out that all it really did was just kind of mess up her momentum. She actually caught it in her teeth. 
and just like, oh, it landed in my mouth, so I thought it was candy. So she just like spits that shit out, and uh, you know, and then she's like, who do you think you are? You know, you're not gonna be able to defeat me with such a cruel attack, like like that, like very basic attack, like that kind of childish. And honestly, that's really all Wolfine has got. She's got no physical strength of her own. All she has is that tripod. And while the tripod is like on like Zeus level, you know, like it's the tripod of the holy ones. But seriously, it, it's sta it's it's pretty it's pretty um tough and you could fire it off projectiles but really that one projectile is all you got it's kind of like a one and done it's kind of like you either hit the enemy and you take them out or you don't uh and the rest of the tripod is not really going to be useful against shakaboon who has like this massive she has like a boot and it's the shakaboon stamp parade and the boots have like like they're like steampunk they got like these like these uh, engines on them that blow out steam that like propels her foot down and up like again and again and again hence the like the turn the parade so she starts stomping the ground and she actually lands a couple hints on wolfina and Wolfina starts, you know, getting knocked around the freaking train like a pinball machine. I'm surprised she hasn't gotten knocked off the thing into the desert. And she, you know, she's bleeding from her freaking face and her, and her eyes, and she's just getting bruised all over. Really freaking terrible. And 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 Shakaboon's just like, I wonder why Lord Balmonk does all these things. You know, he didn't even have to use the magic train, really. He wanted to take the Ring of the Dead from this kid. He would have just, you know, ripped off his head and just took it. And this is referencing, like, when Balmonk was talking to Wolfina, kind of toying with her, he's just like, the Ring of the Dead settles in the head, so all I need to do is just cut off Emilio's, uh, ne cut him off at the neck, and then you can have the rest of the body. All I need is the head. And Shakaboon's wondering, well, why didn't you just do that when you first caught the kid? Why go through this whole elaborate shit with the train and everything like we could have just captured Emilio cut off the dude's head and we could have been out of town already but no you had to I think Balmonk had that thing with Gamma like he really wanted to settle this thing with Gamma he was just delighted by the fact he was able to fight him again that he didn't even want to he wanted to do that he was even really care about the ring of the dead so much as he just wanted to fight Gamma again but Shakaboon does not have that kind of like reservations so she decides just to like uh make his head minced beef and just take it so she just pulls up her boot ready to slam it right into Emilio and we have like a little flashback scene where you know, Wolfina's remembering all the shit that happened with Emilio, and she's like, I was scared of even the result when I save you, going back to the whole thing, like, if I, even if I saved him, he would hate me, because I'm the one that caused him to be in this coma, but she realized that, you know, I've decided that if I die for you, then I won't be afraid anymore. And Wolfina just throws herself right in front of Emilio's body, and we've seen what damage that like like Shakaboon's kicks can do. Like they have those, like little thrusters on them. So if she gets hit like dead on by that thing, it's gonna break something. Like she's like holding up her arms in defense. If that thing hits her arm, it's gonna break her arm. It's gonna snap it like a fucking twig, and uh, you know might not even knock her into Emilio and hurt him anyway. But you know it's not really about that. It's about the fact that this is all she can do now. She can't like her tripod's gone. The only thing she can do is throw herself in front of Emilio as like a human shield. So. So, uh, Shakaboon apparently doesn't really stop. There's no inclination for her to stop. And, you know, Wolfina's just in there. It's like, I will not be afraid of anything anymore. And that is the end of the chapter, and that is the end of Volume 3 of Zombie Powder. Really awesome way to kick it off. Not as good as the way you kicked off Volume 2 with, you know, Gamma bursting into the circus and whipping out the freaking, uh, the Dragon Ring uh, technique there, but it was still a very, very kick-ass way to end a chapter of, of, to end a volume where Wolfina's, like, standing tall, and she's a little bit more, a little bit more, um, I, I should say... Uh, come to terms with herself, you know, like, come to terms with, like, I, I want to save Emilio, and I've tried to do this for so many years, but none of it's had anything, fuck it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do anything, if I'm doing this, I'm gonna die trying, that's basically what her dogma is, and, and, you know, she, she really cares for her brother, and she's, you know, come to terms with all this shit, so, yeah, that'll be the end of uh, volume three, uh, come back, uh, catch me back here, here next time for volume four, the final volume of Zombie Powder, um, actually, it's gonna be the shortest one, too, because I think all the Zombie Powder chapters have about seven, I mean, all the, all the Zombie Powder volumes have seven chapters. I think this last one only has six, uh, but I will be making up for that because there's also a couple bonus chapters, uh, one of which is actually included at the end of this one right here at the end of volume three, but I'm not going to be covering that because I want to balance it out like seven videos per volume. Uh, so uh, at the end of the series, when we're done with chapter 27, I'll be doing a separate video on the different bonus chapters. I believe there's three. Uh, one of them is just like a couple of pages. Another one's like a legitimate bonus chapter, and then the last one is just kind of like an epic poem that Kubo used to like send out uh, zombie powder to call it out so like kind of like it's swan song so uh you know I'll, I'll be referencing those at the end of you know the uh, the series but okay so here we go we got six more chapters of zombie powder left I uh, hope you guys will stick with me to the end shining out <laughs>